Hey guys, what's happening? It's Sean Paul from Michigan. A lot of my friends keep telling me I should do a video about um, child support, ex-felons, and, um, and and that whole scenario on what's going on in Michigan and what's going on with the child support and ex-felons. And uh, I've been talking to people about it like crazy. So I wanted to tell you guys a story about Michigan, about a guy in Michigan that I followed my whole life. And... Um, I realized just how deep the rabbit hole goes when you really look back from point A and you look, you know, to point Z per se, um, with the whole situation of child support, um, ex felons, and um, you know, it even goes back as far as like foster care group homes, stuff like that, and uh, the uh, debtor's prison that was supposed to be um, not legal anymore. It's supposed to be something that's you know, it's, there's a debtor's prison standard set so people don't get placed in it. And I've noticed, uh, at least in Michigan, with the child support and with the um, uh, ex-felons, and not only just the ex-felons, that the uh, debtor's prison's huge, man. It's like the biggest uh, scam or the biggest um, thing I've been kind of keeping my eye on, and I've just been noticing a lot of cases, you know, like everything else, are, are being brought into court now about the debtor's prison. So here it is. Here's a guy that um, he was in prison for nine years, uh, probably like five years or something before that in juvenile facilities, uh, group homes. And so the guy gets out. He's out, you know, I don't know, a couple months, meets a girl, and uh, she's got a couple kids. So, you know, they hook up. He moves in right into her house after a few months. Um, meanwhile, the dad, he's trying to see the kids, the guy that, you know, this woman used to be with. He can't see the kids in Michigan because he could be a threat. He needs to, you know, not see the kids because they're broken up now and she made some allegations. And so um, the guy that just come home from prison in nine years, he's living there. And that guy's trying to tell the courts in Michigan, hey, there's a guy that just came home after nine years of prison and more time before that. And he's living there with my kids, man, and we just broke up. And now she said, I can't see him because a bad guy. And, you know, they didn't do nothing. That guy didn't see his kid for like a year and a half. This guy had to convince her to let that guy see his kids. And so um, th that should tell you something right there about what's going on with Michigan. So anyways, this guy's a pretty decent guy. He gets a job. He gets a good network. Uh, um, you know, support group to, you know, uh, reacclimate because there is no programs available for ex-felons. If, if you come home and you max out and you do all your time, there's not any programs available. Um, this guy found out that will, you know, help you out as an ex-felon. Um, they make a lot of claims that there is programs, but the thing is this guy lost two jobs, one at Lowe's and one through a private contractor. Um, because with letters sent saying from Lowe's, you've been great employee here building decks for six months, all-star review. We're going to have to let you go because you're a felon. So that was the first time he lost his job. And then he lost another job right after that. And um, the one of the bosses actually quit the uh, contract. He's a guy out of Brighton named Lee. He quit the contract because that was his main guy. It was this guy here that was he was doing the decks with and everything was going great, but they fired this guy because he was a felon. So here it is. This guy's two times fired now because he's a felon. Hangs out with this girl for nine years. She gets pregnant. Keep in mind, this guy doesn't get in any trouble with the law or nothing. He's raising her kids. Him and the kids still talk. Um, good relationship. They don't say nothing bad about him. Um, so... Uh, he's raising her kids. She gets pregnant. She wants a divorce right away. <laughs> Go figure. So this guy gets a paternity test and, you know, starts seeing this kid. She runs off and hides in a hospital. Uh, this guy's freaking out, you know. He's thinking it's not his kid. She's hiding from him and his family. So anyways, he gets a paternity test on the kid's his. So he's an ex-felon. Out on his own. Trying to, you know, do the right thing. He gets a house. Uh, you know, still working a little bit. This is right after a guy had a, an accident, was down for a year and a half, which is probably the reason for the divorce um, or the breakup. So, anyways, the baby's born out of the situation. 
guy steps up just like he did with her two kids. He says, hey, I want to see my kid. I'll do whatever I got to do. He starts paying her every month, um, you know, and getting receipts and stuff, seeing the kid whenever she's allowing him to. Because it was, you know, she, at first she was like hiding because she didn't know whose kid was. And um, it's all, you know, documented stuff. And so then she gets a boyfriend. So he gets a girlfriend. He goes to see his kid. Um, kid doesn't want to go because it's been so many months since she's let him see the kid. So the kid's crying, you know. I've listened to all the videotapes of him asking, when can I see my kid? And her saying, you just can't stick to a schedule and blah, blah, blah. So he goes to court, try to get a court order to get visitation. In Michigan, it's 50-50 um, automatically. They tell him it's supervised visitation because they have some report that he made a threat to leave and take his baby to another state. I've listened to the videotape of the hearing at, at the FOC, and there was no threat or not even a mention of him leaving to go to California and take his baby. He went on vacation to California for two weeks and then came right back like a year later. Um, so that was the evidence that they got. And I, I actually got it right here. So I'm working on the case that they had made this report. And, uh, you know, I don't know if it's necessary you see it, but um, so they made this report saying that this guy was going to take his baby and maybe go to another re state. And that's the whole reason supervised visitation was put into place for this guy. So now he's an ex felon, raised this girl's kids for two years, watched her alienate those kids from the parents, which now those parents have full custody of those kids. And she only has custody of the baby she's hiding. And um, so now there's child support. Now there's child support stacking up. Because, you know, they went to court and got it all in the books. Um, they got supervised visitation. It's like, I don't know, 1500 bucks or something a month. See his kid plus 550 in child support a month. It's like he doesn't even make that much guy in an accident. So um, here it is. This guy's providing everything. House, willing to see his kid. Um, the state won't do nothing. They won't give any visitations other than something that makes them money for this guy. So they break the law right there, probably because he's a felon. They know what the fuck's he gonna do. You know what I mean? Um, so now I'm watching the child support stack up and stack up, and they're calling this guy. They're they're harassing him, threatening him. Every time he tries to see his kid, they want to counter with, "You could go to jail and be charged with a felony," and blah blah blah. So here it is: a guy spent probably like close to 15 years incarcerated, gets out, changes his life, takes care of somebody else's kids, never had any accusations or anything placed against them during that whole time, still talks to the kids and the other parents, um, gets a job, stays out of trouble, you know, re, you know, rehabs addicts and helps out other guys that are in situations where they haven't learned how to like decompress and acclimate. And um, so now this guy can't see his kid being threatened with going to jail. So now here it is. Now, you know, in Michigan, if you get a felony on top of previous felonies, they consider that the habitual offense, which is punishable by life in prison. So now they're trying to put guys in prison for child support debt. That's a civil debt that most of the time isn't even valid, especially in this guy's case. The judge actually went to going to jail. He's going to prison on unrelated charges and... She's pretty much been found to be guilty of unethical practices in this particular case that we're speaking about. Um, so here it is now in Michigan. You can get out of prison, you can do everything right, and you can still face the threat of going to jail or prison because of a financial debt that you can't even meet because you lose jobs and you can prove it. And if that's not debtor's prison, I don't know what is. So this is what the deal is in Michigan. I don't know what's going on in other states. This is how they're playing it here. It makes no sense. They lie to people and say that there's programs for these ex-convicts. But the only programs are available is if you're on parole. If you're on parole, you might qualify. Because if you call DTE and they say that they're hiring felons from prison now to do, you know, train them and do stuff. But you can't call them if you're a felon and say, hey, I want to work for you guys. Uh, I'm a felon. It's, you know, you're not allowed. You can look it right up on their own website. But if you're in prison or getting out, then they'll work with you because there's grant money. So all these people that are getting out of prison 
and reoffending is they don't know what the fuck else to do. There's no f- programs available other than fraudulent programs that lead people to believe that there's something set in place. Like these guys can go to college and get free grants. I mean, I'd like for somebody to hit me up and, and tell me who they are because it seems like there's always a stipulation or a criteria. Um, the only time you can get programming is actually in the prison because you're already paid for to have your ass there and those programs are already being funded and they need to have bodies in there to make it look like it's a correctional facility versus a prison. You know, and I'll tell you, the guy that I'm talking about, that's me. I'm the guy that was there. And when I was in prison, there was 17 women that were raped in Michigan prison. This is recently in the last few years that these cases came out. That's what's going on in Michigan prison. Bitches are getting raped by cops. Cops are bringing in dope cell phones. Um, the younger generation cops coming in, they're being mistrained, causing riots, all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, there's no rehabilitation in there. Um, it's been a big money train. Even the governor claims that they put together a task force to investigate why the prison population has quadrupled or something. And it's real common sense. It's, it's, it's quadrupled because there's no available programs for these men and women and maybe drug addicts to come into after and have some sort of um, opportunity that is being funded by any kind of grant money. Instead, the money that's available must be getting misused because these people are continuously coming back to prison in a cycle and then people are going to prison for shit they shouldn't even do because you can tell by the prison population some of these people should not be in prison and some of these people should be in prison and what it is is there's so much money to be made by putting people in prison and then letting them out on tether letting them out on parole but there's no money when you do your time and go home so you don't get no benefits you're out there to fend for yourself you can't have any guns you're not going to have any real job on the books because you're a felon. And fuck that building trades class you took in there. You're not going to get a builder's license. Felons do not get builder's license regardless of what you think. So, you know, there's a whole bunch of uh, uh, a cards stacked against you guys and against myself. And uh, that's just the way it is. I wanted to make a video because a lot of people, they've kind of watched me go through this the last... I came home in 2005. It's 2019 now. My crime was in 96. And, um, yeah, and, you know, I, I, got, I got friends, you know, friends, family. I even have some law enforcement that I've known my whole life that keeps tabs on me as friends of mine, different people. And, you know, my life's been up and down. And this is the new journey now. It's how to get past the debitors prison in Michigan and not face more jail or prison time or worse because of the dysfunctional system that has misplaced probably millions of dollars in the Department of Corrections. Uh, meanwhile, there's crimes happening in and out of the prison um, and, and funds that are just pretty much missing. Um, the conditions in there are not what, what you would think um, it's definitely, definitely a very grim place. I, I, I guess that, you know, it's, it, maybe it should be for, for some people, but that's what's going on. If you got child support in Michigan, if you're an ex-felon, there's probably about a hundred percent chance you're going to be in a debtor's prison and they know it. Uh, so I just wanted to put it out there and see what kind of feedback I get. All right. Take it easy guys.